A pitcher for a baseball team is diagnosed with traumatic axillary aneurysm. Surgically, it's possible to successfully tie off the first part of the axillary artery because of which vessels that would provide distal segment vascularization. The suprascapular and circumflex scapular vessels will anastomose, and the logic behind this choice where you've got the um, portion before the blockage that needs to get around to the portion after the blockage. Now, it's the anastomosis around the shoulder where the suprascapular vessel will be coming from the subclavian artery and the circumflex scapular will be coming off the distal components of the axillary artery and they'll anastomose around the shoulder giving an alternative blood supply pathway for any blockages that would occur within the axilla itself. Following a cycling accident in which a 28-year-old woman fell on her outstretched hand, she noticed a pain in her anatomical snuff box. Radiography indicated a fracture. The orthopedist pinned the bone fragments together. Which bone was most likely involved? As soon as you see that anatomical snuff box, that should be a red flag for you. Fall on outstretched hand. The age of this individual all will be um, important indicators for the fact that she's probably got a scaphoid fracture. Remember, the lunate is an option, but it's more often a dislocated lunate at this point. And the capitate can be fractured, um, but again, not near as often as the scaphoid and the ruling out feature there would be that it's not in the snuff box.